Hello everyone, welcome back to the platformer lessons. In lesson number 10, we'll be adding a more complex and smarter enemy that will patrol along platforms. I'll be creating this enemy in level 3. If you haven't yet, make sure your level 3 is set up to look like this. The next step is we're going to add a few more platforms to the right of this one. In order to do so quickly, highlight this, press Ctrl C to copy, and press Ctrl V to paste. In order to make a gap of two blocks, I'm going to change this range to be 5. Then I'll change this to 10 to make it 5 blocks long. And just like that, we have another platform. This is the platform that we're going to place our new enemy on. So what is the new enemy? Well, it's going to be what I call a rock enemy. We'll need to add a class for it. So go ahead and click the plus sign there. And I'll name it rock enemy, just like that. Next, we need a sprite for it. I'm going to use an animation from the Asset Store. Open up the Asset Store and, and click Next until you reach Rocky Run. There he is. I'm going to name him Rock Run and click OK. So this animation is longer than the player animations. Altogether, it has 14 sprites. First, let's set up that animation. I'm going to call this sprite sheet run SS, and it's going to use that rock run dot PNG. It's going to have one row and 14 columns. Next is the run animation. It's a new animation. It's using the run sprite sheet. It's going to be at 30 frames per second. And it's going to start at sprite 0 and end at sprite 13. Remember, that's the last one in the list if we've got 14 sprites all together. And then we'll set that animation. On self, and we'll use the run anim. Now notice that I don't use the word self dot run anim here, because I'm only going to set this animation once. I don't have to change it later on. I don't have to do anything to it in the loop. If you do wish to change it later on, you will need to go back and add a self dot in front of here. Next, we're going to add two variables. They're going to look familiar. First is self.movingRight. I'm going to set that equal to false at the beginning. So he'll start moving left. Next, I'm going to add a speed. I'm going to set his speed equal to 3. So he'll move pretty fast. Before I progress, I'm actually going to add the rock enemy to my level 3. So right before I add the platforms, I'm going to add my rock enemy. I'm going to name him Rocky, and he's going to be a rock enemy class. Now we don't need to set a sprite for him, because he's going to have that animation already. So I'm going to say his X position is equal to 100. There he is. He's looking pretty good over there. Now, let's get him moving. Head back to the rock enemy loop. And let's add in our first if statements. First, we'll check if his moving right variable is true. And if so, we'll move him to the right. 
So if self.movingRight is equal to true, we'll say self.x plus equals self.speed. And now we'll do the opposite and check if moving right is false. And if so, we'll move them to the left. Look at him go. Now as you can see, he just keeps moving left, kind of like the fly enemies. We'll also want him to change direction. But first, let's make sure he's actually colliding with the ground. We'll give him a bit of gravity to make him move down until he touches the ground. So just like we did with the player, we're going to say self.y minus equals 3. We'll also want to give him a collision check, so we say if get collision between self and any floor, we're going to counter gravity. So we'll say self.y plus equals 3. And as you can see, when he stops touching the ground, he starts falling off. Now instead of making him fall off the platforms, what we're going to do is tell him to turn around when he reaches the end of a platform. The easiest way to check if he's at the end of a platform is to see if he stopped, stopped colliding with it. So if we add an else here, that means we're checking if he's not colliding with the floor. And if so, we're going to switch moving right to be the opposite. So if he was moving right, we'll tell him to move left. And if he's moving left, we'll tell him to move right. We can do that with a couple more if statements, just like the ones above, but we can also do it in one line of code, which I'll show you right now. If we say self.movingRight is equal to not self.movingRight, what I'm doing here is I'm telling the code to set moving right equal to its opposite. That's what the not keyword means here. So if moving right is true, I'm going to now set it equal to false. And if it was false, I'm now going to set it equal to true. And just like that, a rock enemy will start switching direction when he reaches the end of the platform. but it still looks like he's running to the left all the time. Well, let's fix that. Let's take another look at these if statements up here. If the rock enemy is moving to the right, I want him to face the right direction. We can do that by changing the scale x. Now normally you use scale x to make things bigger or smaller, but you can also flip them around by using negative numbers. So since our rock enemy starts by looking to the left, we want to reverse that to make him look to the right. If we say equals negative 1, we're keeping the scale at the same size because it starts at 1, but we're flipping it around. Next, if he's starting to move to the left, we have to do the opposite. We have to turn him back around. So we say scale x equals 1. And just like that, he turns around. You can also do the same code to make the player turn around the same way. Try your hand at that. You might also want to add collision between the rock enemy and the player. In order to do so, you'll need to copy a lot of this code from the player loop. But instead of using fly enemy, 
you'll put rock enemy in there. And if you want to add a health value to the rock enemy, you'll need these variables as well, along with the code in the loop. I recommend making the rock enemy a bit tougher than the fly enemy. Next, we're going to do a practice session. I want you to create a new enemy called turnip enemy. Use the turnip fly animation found in the asset store. Set up the f turnip fly animation inside the turnip start. Next, add the same variables as the rock enemy has, but you'll also need two more called left edge and right edge. Both will be integers equal to a number that's up to you. Let me explain what we'll use those for. This is going to be the turnip enemy's patrol. When you start the game, he'll either start moving left or right. If he reaches one of the edges, he'll stop and then turn around. And if he reaches the other edge, he'll stop and turn around, and he'll keep going back and forth between those two edges. For that reason, we want the right edge to be a bigger number than his starting position, whether that's 400 or 500 or even just 210. The left edge should be smaller. Now this x equals 200 is not set in stone. You can change it to be whatever number you like. Add the turnip enemy to your level 3 and position him where you like. Inside the turnip enemy's loop, set up the movement. If he's moving to the left, make him move to the left. If he's moving to the right, make him move right. If the turnip's x value is less than the left edge, set moving right to true. If the turnip's x value is greater than the right edge, set moving right to false. Don't forget to set up the health and collision for the turnip enemy as well. Since he flies, you don't need to have him collide with the floor, but he will collide with the player. Try your hand at creating this before moving on to the next lesson. I'll see you there.